A crime story, a murder mystery that gripped newsrooms and the nation for weeks and months together back in 2015 and the case continues to drag on with the release of a brand new documentary the Indrani Mukherjee story buried truth on Netflix now four episodes long and with information never known before new light has been thrown on perhaps the most mysterious murder case this country has seen in dec decades together. And the person at the middle of the entire mystery and who continues to be at the middle of this entire story is Indrani Mukherjee herself. But I'm going to start this interview, Indrani, by asking a question which you probably have asked, been asked the most. But it's a question that bears repeating because it still doesn't have an answer. Did you kill Sheena Bora? Well, I think, um, you know, today the very fact that I have come out in the open, mm. I think I am the only accused who has come out very open, openly to talk in the documentary. I've also written a book and I have been very forthcoming with all my, you know, all the questions uh, that have been asked. I've been very forthcoming with my answers for one simple reason that uh, anything that I have said or everything that I have said, I have been able to validate with evidence, which has already been submitted in court. And uh, as far as, uh, you know, I think a question like this goes, the question that you asked me just now, I think the court is going to ultimately decide the guilt or the innocence but personally, if you're asking me this question, mm. you must first remember that I am Sheena's mother. Yeah. She is my firstborn child. Okay? And I think all mothers always have a special corner for their firstborn child all the time. And there is absolutely, absolutely neither any reason nor any motive or nor any lack of, uh, you know, what do you call it, lack of uh, uh, love from my end, which would have ever, ever kind of moved me to do something so gruesome. Mm. And uh, I think it is shocking that even people actually believe that Anybody, forget about me, I mean, obviously any mother is capable of committing a crime like this. For anyone to have believed something so ghastly, I think it's itself, you know, I but, think but, it's but very Indrani... shocking. And I'll, I'll just finish. Yeah. And I think even before today, this question is being asked to me almost after six and a half years, yeah. seven years. But I think this question should have been really asked a long, long time ago. It was. Uh, well, I don't think so. It okay. was really asked. But, but, but Indrani, yeah. sorry to interrupt, but yeah. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, heinous crimes do happen. Yeah. It's not like yeah. they don't happen. Yeah. You're, you know, you're right about the shock factor yeah. of a mother, you know, uh, uh, accused of yeah. killing her own yeah. daughter. Yeah. I take all of that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the, with the greatest of respect for the personal aspects of what you're talking right. about, you know, right. uh, I think everyone is aware that you... Uh, are Sheena Bora's mother, and that's the reason why uh, this story continues to shock people. My next question to you, therefore, mm -hmm. would be, uh, Sheena went missing in 2012. Correct. You were arrested in 2015. Uh, uh, what happened in 2012 then? If she, you know, if you're saying you didn't kill Sheena Bora, what happened to her? See, obviously, she disappeared. That is very clear. But now... The evidence that has come on record in court very clearly establishes that she was very much around, around, and when till 2012 September. Mm. Okay, that has that evidence has already come on record. Yes, it is very true to say that since 2012 April, I have had absolutely no contact with Sheena. I have not had any contact. But uh, call records that have actually ratified call records mm. okay, by the FSL that have been submitted in uh, the trial court very clearly establishes that uh, she has been in touch with Rahul Mukherjee. Yeah, yeah. So which is out there. It is not me saying it. It is, you know, very much there.
But you've so, also been on record to say that Sheena is alive. No, no, I, I am sorry, I have not said that. Okay, so again, let me clarify yeah. that, which I've already clarified no, in because, the No, because you've said, Indrani, and, and yeah, I want to yeah. just press this point, because you're yeah. saying that you've made claims that can all be validated. That's, yes. that's why I'm pressing that point. So, now, it is not, I have never made a claim, I have never made a claim that Sheena is alive. What has been submitted in court is... People who have, who claim to have met Sheena or seen Sheena, that is not my claim. So whoever has seen, like there is an advocate who had apparently seen Sheena, the, her, the footage on her phone has been submitted in court, the CCTV footage has been submitted in court, but I have personally never met Sheena. Just to be clear, from, you're saying CCTV footage yes, supposedly from, of Sheena after the date of her known disappearance. Yes, yes, which is in, I think, 2023 January, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. I think 5th of January or 4th of January, 2000. And what has been said about that footage? It's, oh, it's submitted still in, in court and yeah. it's sealed. And uh, obviously this lady who had, uh, you know, seen somebody who resembled Sheena. Now, Do you, you know, believe that? What is your view? Do see, you think I, Sheena is alive? I will tell you something. I... Uh, in my heart, I don't really know, but whatever the, there's more than one person who claims to have, you know, seen Sheena, met Sheena, and it has also happened that in 2020, was it in 2020 or 21? Mm. Yes, for somebody else who was actually a police officer, she was with the crime branch earlier. So she, uh, she had claimed that she had seen Sheena in Kashmir. And to that effect, in fact, we had, um, you know, sent a letter to uh, the investigating agency so that, you know, the CCTV footage could be gathered because after some time the CCTV footage goes. But no action was taken. But what about, the, girl, but what about the DNA evidence of the body that was found? It's, actually, been, it's been linked to you. Why, why don't you simply ask for another DNA test? No, we don't think... need to. It has already been established that it, it was forged. So I don't have to ask for it anymore. So, what has happened... No, so why don't you ask for another DNA test if you believe that it was a forged DNA test, the remains that were found? So, because the investigation is apparently closed. So, that is, we've, we've asked for a lot of things, okay, but, uh, you know, nothing has really, there's been no movement on that, mm. right? For example, when uh, this lady had come and said that she had met Sheena, we had asked for an investigation. We said, you please get the CCTV footage. This lady was willing to go and show the exact spot because she is a police officer herself, yeah, right? Yeah. And so that the CCTV footage, if any, uh, you know, could have been retrieved, but nobody took any action. Mm. So which itself speaks volumes, you see, because that is, I think, uh, really very unbecoming, I think, of any agency to do something You know, like, like you that. said, like you said, yeah. Indrani, you you are Sheena Bora's mother. Yes. Okay? And you, yes. you, you made it a point to emphasize that, uh, and I think that's important because yes. that goes to the heart of also how this story was treated, yes. uh, you know, how newsroom looked at the story, how yes. people made up their minds about you as well. Yes. And, this, and the case isn't over yet, and you've yes. chosen to come out uh, and, you know, speak in this documentary that's coming up as well. My question to you is, uh, you know, you say you frankly don't know what happened. You don't know if she's alive yes. or she's gone. Yes. Uh, and this is your child we're talking about. Yes. So I, I, I mean this with the greatest degree of sensitivity, aware that you yes. are the mother. My question to you is, what do you think happened to her? You, you know, after all these years, it's been a decade now, actually more than a decade because she disappeared in 2012. What do you think happened? Uh, what Shiv, happened to Sheena? Who do you think did something to her? Shiv, uh, I, you know, think... There are people in the family who are aware what has happened to Sheena. Okay, I'm, I am absolutely Peter. convinced about this. In fact, I filed an application in court to that effect. Okay, so I don't want to see until and unless I do not have concrete evidence. But you mean Peter? Oh, well, I shall not say that right now, but definitely because um, I have reasons to believe that. And not just reasons because I think, because I think there is enough evidence which has already come on record mm. and there is even more evidence which we will put forward from you know our defense side right. and which i cannot obviously uh, you know show my cards at this yeah. my, when i say my cards means you know the defense cards as of now i cannot talk about it 
But coming back to the DNA aspect, when you said that, uh, you know, why don't we ask for another DNA test? Obviously, the first body that was allegedly, there was a body which was discovered in 2012, uh, there is no DNA report of that. So that, that goes. In 2015, apparently, another body which was discovered. So there was allegedly a DNA test which matched my blood sample. Yeah. Now, of course, when the DNA expert came uh, you know, to depose, now it turned out to be something completely different because he admitted to have changed you know, the allele numbers in the electropharogram mm -hmm. to which ultimately ended up matching within his own handwriting because an elect electropharogram is always machine printed only. So you cannot just scratch out and okay, this is Indrani Mukherjee's DNA report. Okay. So this has, so it is 15 allele numbers. So these allele numbers are coordinates, the X and Y coordinates. Okay. So yeah. you're basically saying that the, 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 the DNA test, the, the, basically the claim by the prosecution that this was Sheena's body, you basically, you're, you're, you're putting that entirely into doubt because of the way it's handled. I am not putting no, it into are doubt. Are you saying you're being framed? Says, are you absolutely, saying you're being framed? Absolutely. I said this, I think, but on the But by night. who? But by who? It has to be, you know, is it a bunch of people? Is it your family? What is the motive to frame you in this? See, motives, I think, uh, can be several. Okay, so uh, it could be financial, it could be personal. See, I'm t I don't know what goes on in somebody else's head and for what reasons, but I can tell you yeah. for sure, for sure. Because there were things that happened immediately on the day of my arrest or after my arrest, which over a period of time uh, made me realize, you know, that I was definitely... Property I'm, titles shifting, etc. Lots of things, a lot of things, which, I mean, come on, you know, you... Um, you don't decide on the day a family member gets arrested. All you can think of is writing an email to the society to stop transfers. I mean, it's just there are there are several things. Okay, so so you, you there are several things which have made me believe over a period of time that definitely I was framed and somebody okay. very very close to me, mm. obviously. Indrani, you know. You talked about how it's possibly financial or personal. You don't. Uh, you, you claim not to know what the reason could be. Uh, but I want to come to one of the most personal things that you revealed some months ago, and you talk about it for the first time in much greater detail in this documentary, uh, which is uh, who Sheena Bora really was. Mm -hmm. That she was, uh, uh, you know, your child from your own father. That's it was correct. a product of rape, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it was a very, very traumatic. Uh, you know, episode in your life and that you'd moved away from it. Uh, my question to you is, when did, when did you break it to your family? Uh, and I'm talking about your family with Peter Mukherjee. When did they come to know that Sheena is not your sister but your daughter? Uh, because actually, that appears to have been part of how right. this entire episode unfolded. And that was very much part of the whole shock value. I remember right. being in the office when there was actually a breaking news story saying... Right. Sheena isn't Indrani's yeah, yeah. sister, she's yeah. her daughter. Yeah. So uh, let me now, when you said uh, Peter's family, okay? Now the only person obviously who knew about it, as far as I have communicated in Peter's family is Peter. Mm. He knew and about it Of course throughout. he knew about it. And I think uh, there So is... at no point did he think that Sheena no, is your uh, no, sister? No, no, no. So uh, that is something uh, which I think there is enough evidence to back that mm, up. Mm. And I think from somebody from your channel itself, I think it was Vidya. Yeah. I remember correctly. Our crime uh, reporter in Mumbai. Yes, yes. in uh, your crime reporter in Mumbai, Vidya, when uh, Rahul Mukherjee was uh, finished his trial. And uh, she caught him, actually. Mm. And Rahul Mukherjee has come on record to say that even he knew that she was uh, always my daughter. Mm. And, uh, you know, so it is, uh, you know, very strange that, you know, people made such a big... So uh, you're saying everyone knew she was see, your daughter? I don't know about everyone. I cannot say that about everyone because on record, on record, when we talk about official records, she is... Uh, 
you know, like my the daughter of my parents, mm. right? Because yeah. you know the background, how she was adopted, and you've yes. I think yes. yeah, yeah. I've written it in my book, and it's in the chart sheet as well right. that she was adopted when she was a baby. And uh, but as far as uh, Peter goes, yes, as did uh, you know my ex-husband Sanjeev yeah. Khanna, yeah. so that. He and his mom. I'd like to speak about Rahul for a minute because yes, Rahul became yes. a protagonist in this entire episode for a long time because yes. he was uh, uh, engaged uh, uh, engaged to Shishina. Or we don't know he, whether he was married, least, engaged, we don't know. At least he That's referred to her as his fiance yeah. in his phone yeah. conversations that he was recording because yeah. uh, he yeah. uh, at least claims not to have been in the know about what mm. was happening mm. with her. In those conversations, and uh, there are extended conversations which are now part of this documentary. Right. It seems like, and, uh, and, and I want your perspective on this because this is important. I'm sure it's part of the investigation. It seems like Rahul is desperate to find out hmm. where Sheena is. Hmm. And it looks like both Peter and you from the background, Indrani, hmm. are audible in the, those audio cassettes, hmm. uh, trying to dissuade him, saying she's gone away, you know, maybe she needs some time off. It looks like you're dissuading him from pursuing any information about her. Okay, that let, looks suspicious. Yeah. Okay. So let me clarify this. Uh, if you've heard all the tapes, also there are tapes where uh, both Peter and I have told. So I I won't speak for Peter. Hmm. We have been insistent on those tapes uh, that uh, you know he should come with us to the police station. So that is very very clear, which. He kept on making excuses. Hmm. He never came. Uh, you know, I would say even public opinion in yeah, general yeah, was, yeah. you know, painted you, Indrani, as a, mm. as a kind of bloodless mother. Yeah. You know, a, a decision had been taken in the public mind, a mo yeah. monster, etc. So I, I actually want to ask you uh, about how you dealt with all of that. that. You know, that view seemed to have, you know, pretty much sunk in. It took root. The case isn't over just yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's a question that is still being asked. Yeah. But how did you deal with that, being painted as that? You know, more than actually uh, what uh, the society or the media had to paint me as, honestly for me, uh, when I heard the news about Sheena's alleged demise, mm. okay, so we don't know. For me, Sheena had vanished in 2012. So that thought really never crossed my mind that she would be no more. So for me... I think the first year was more of grieving about her loss till I started seeing the, those, you know, what people had to think about me, I think was, I was immune to all that. Honestly, that really didn't bother me as much because there was a bigger, this thing that why would a, why would somebody do that to her? That was one. And because for a long time, I believed myself till we started digging more and more into the DNA reports. I also believe she was no more, right? Mm. The first year, that was my belief because I believed the DNA report was right. I knew I hadn't done it, but I also believed at that point that somebody did something to her and that DNA report is the correct report. Yeah, yeah. Right, so that was my grief initially till my lawyers said, hang on, this is a, you know, half a page report is not a DNA report. And I was asked this question very categorically at that point by my, that time my trial lawyer was uh, Sudhi Pasbola. He asked me a very simple question that, Indrani, I need you to be honest with me, you have done it or not done mm. it. Because if you haven't done it, I'm going to pull out every single piece of evidence and I'm going to ask for everything which will clear your name. So obviously I said that I haven't done it. Then he said, I'm going to ask for everything. That is when he asked yeah. for this raw data of the DNA and we found it that it was, you know, all forged and it was out of that 15 allele numbers, eight were handwritten to match my blood sample. Right. So now, that is when kind of I became much stronger and I realized that somebody... See, I knew from the beginning that obviously from day one, and if you remember, if you go back to your records, mm. and I think I said it to your channel, I can't remember who, because I was asked on the 19th yeah, yeah. of uh, November 2015, I was coming out of the police van, I was asked that, have you been framed? And I said, yes, I have been framed. 
I was asked another question that have the police framed you? So I said, I am not sure. Then hmm. I was asked one more question that has Peter framed you. It was very strange because at that time, I still remember very distinctly one journal asking me this. Hmm. Right. As, and I kept quiet. Because by then, I think I knew someone very close to me, wanted to ensure that I was yeah. inside for some reason. Yes. Many of the things that I've asked you today, Indrani, have more detailed answers in this documentary. That's correct. But it's important to point out that many of the questions don't have uh, mm. you know, clear answers just yet. I'd like to end uh, this interview by asking you. You can ask me those questions. 2012 to now, you know, it's been a dozen years. You've spent half of that time in jail. Um, and you claim that you didn't commit this crime. I Apart claim, from this crime, I, I, I am being very honest about in, it. In, in, in court and in public opinion, yeah, it, yeah, it, it still pleaded, is your claim. I have pleaded not guilty because I am not guilty. With the greatest of respect, ma'am, so I, I agree is, with that. I'm just that saying is technically. The reason, you know, I that a court will decide. Have, uh, I am absolutely sure, Shiv. I am going to get acquitted in this case okay. because. I have not done it. And no matter how hard anyone tries, they will never be able to bring evidence against me. Is there anything? Me, only because they cannot prove a crime that I have not committed. It's as simple. They can forge. Is there anything so, that you regret doing? You've, you, you say you didn't commit this crime. Let's keep that aside for a moment. Yeah. Is there anything else you regret in the last, I would say, 15 years? I regret having met, having actually got married to Peter, but that's not in the last 15 years. I got married to him in 2002 and I met him in 2001. Yeah. I think my life would have been very different, but this is, I suppose, you know, uh, life, you know, you don't always, yeah. you know, life always doesn't, you know, seem the way or turn out the way you want it. But I think I'm in a good place shift today. I think I'm, uh, I have... Obviously, I know who my friends are and who are not. And I'm very happy not to have a fair with a family and a fair with a husband. I think I'm lucky. And uh, I am going to fight this. And as, uh, you know, at one point in time, uh, the media and, um, you know, a large chunk of society believed that, you know, I... I'm guilty. I think there is okay. a large number of people who do believe in my innocence as well today. And uh, which is why I have gone out and done this documentary, because I have nothing to hide. Indrani, uh, thank you for taking all of our questions and being candid here on India Today. We look forward to that documentary. And remember, the case isn't over yet. And that's the reason why the Indrani Mukherjee story is still called Buried Truth. Thanks for watching.